Welcome back to another Ram.js video, and this video is truly going to be a short video because this time we're simply going to talk about the function divide and the function multiply. And I mean, divide is division and multiply is multiplication. But then you have auto currying, which means that you can partially apply them. And I guess that's it, <laughs> right? So if that already makes perfect sense to you, no worries. Thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next video. But otherwise, if you, I mean, <laughs> let's let's st or uh, if you want to stick around for the interesting details i'm not sure if there will be any interesting details but we'll try and find them let's go right so let's read the type definition here so the type definition of divide is that when given a number you get a new function that expects another number and then when you give that number then you get back a number essentially so you can see this as an auto curried function that takes two numbers and returns a number and i mean that makes sense right because that's what division does it div it's it's a binary operation that uh, takes two numbers as input and returns a, a single number as output. It's equivalent to a uh, divided by b or a over b, right? And uh, I mean, you can see, or actually, I mean, let's just jump into node and say uh, const r equals require ramda. So we'll require ramda uh, like that. And then we have r dot divide. Then we have the function. And then we can say, well, 10 divided by 2, that's 5, right? 100, whoops, 100. What the? 100 divided by 10, that's 10. Okay, so all good, right? It's division. But of course, again, you can partially apply it so you can construct a uh, divider that uh, divides 100 uh, by any number that you give it or in any number of slices that you give it, right? So this gives us a function because it's partially applied. So that means that, let's say you say, let f be, uh, be the division of 100. That means if you apply 100 or the, the function to 2, then you get 50. If you apply the function to 10, then you, you get 10, right? And if you apply the function to 100, then you get 100. But um, maybe, I mean, I'm not sure that you might have a scenario that requires this. Um, maybe, yeah, actually, I mean, if you think about it, you might actually have a scenario that requires this. So like, let's say you're drawing a uh, pie chart or something like this. I mean, uh, let me just show you. I mean, a pie chart is this thing, right? Do, 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 do images, this is a pie chart, right? So like, for let's say for some reason you have a, um, a an application that's drawing a pie chart and then maybe, well, what was, what was I going to say? Okay, so maybe a pie chart is a, is a bad example because then you have, um, it's a bit trickier because you have a circle and all that. But let's say like you're, you're dividing up some area into a number of pieces or something like that. So, so you would, you would have the area and the area is a hundred, but you don't necessarily know so as in a hundred percent, right? But you don't necessarily know how many slices you want to divide it into. And then you could, you could wait for that to be supplied when, uh, when, when you supply that argument. Actually, I think the pie chart was a particularly bad example, but I think you can see what I'm saying, right? It's like, let's say you have something that you want, that you know, that you want to divide into a number of parts, but you don't necessarily know how many parts you want to divide it into, then you can simplify that by first constructing the function and then passing around that function that only takes a single argument, right? I mean, in some sense, you could think about it. I think somebody said something like, ooh, I can't, so I think I learned this from Ben Ornstein. Ben Ornstein, Ben Ornstein? Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name. He has uh, two great videos, or he's given the talk uh, at least two times that he calls uh, refactoring from good to great. So uh, he's programming in Ruby in those videos, and he's essentially taking uh, some, like already good code and refactoring it into already better code, and kind of that's how he's. Uh, presenting the talk and, and from him I learned the idea that if you have a function or then he talks about methods in object-oriented programming but if you have a method that takes two arguments that's worse than a method that takes one argument right and like if you have a method that takes five arguments that's worse than if you have a method that takes four but that's worse than if you have a method that takes one and that's worse than if you have a method that takes zero and so forth right um, or actually not and so forth because negative one doesn't really make any sense but I meant like downwards down to zero. So like in some sense, then zero is the best uh, method or the best arity of a function because then you have no arguments, but then you're essentially like in functional programming, then you're talking about a constant. And I wouldn't necessarily argue that um, that makes sense in object oriented programming if you allow mutation, because then you are, you might sort of be inclined to say that, um, or actually maybe that makes sense. Sorry, that, that makes sense because then you've internalized the variables into the class um, but then it's, yeah, so if you don't have side effects, then that's sort of somewhat equivalent, not to a constant, oh, okay, sorry, now I'm being confusing. If you have a, a class that's, 
um, if you have a method in a in a class that takes no arguments and is pure, uh, then then that that might not be a constant because on an instance level you might like load the instance with different values uh, by passing things through the constructor, right? So like the constructor is like the last argument in some sense uh, in in a um, in a in a function's arguments like i have another i have another video on uh, which like just a cold walk on on uh, discussing the idea of which argument you should make the last argument when when working with functional programming right because like the the last argument is the one that's easiest to partially apply last right so so in some sense, you could think about it as that in functional programming, you should put the thing that varies the most in the end, but it's not always obvious what, what the thing is that you should vary the most. But I think if I remember correctly from in that video, I'm arguing that it's something like um, whatever you would name the class, that thing should be the last uh, argument. So like if it's, uh, if the, if you would put the instance method on a, on a, on a, uh, matrix on a class that you would call matrix, for example, or like box, right? Then box is the last, um, the the last argument, the, or the the, arg the argument that you should put last in a in a series of arguments for a function, because that's probably the thing that you want to apply last, because that's the thing you want to have varied the most. Uh, why am I saying this? <laughs> I am so confused at the moment, but. Um, I mean, we're, we're talking about, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, Ben Ornstein, refactoring from good to great. Uh, if, yeah, yeah, so, so reducing arity of, of functions makes sense, right? So, um, yeah, so, so, right, right. And that's why I was saying that in object-oriented programming, uh, zero arity doesn't mean the same as zero arity in functional programming, because zero arity uh, in, or I mean, what is that? Like, no, not unary, it's nullary. Oh, sorry, the, the lights went on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> sorry, okay. Um, timers and lights, never mind. Um, so if if you have a uh, yeah but but so so if you have a function that is that is nullary sorry nullary is the word i was looking for like if it takes no arguments a nullary function in functional programming like literally takes no arguments and if it's nullary then that means it it is a constant right if all if your whole system is pure if it's impure i mean for sure then then it depends on the other state and then it's not necessarily a constant because you might have randomness for example um, but but that's not necessarily the case in object-oriented programming because in object-oriented programming, you might have passed things in through the constructor, and your nullary function might depend on those things that are passed in through the constructor. So hence, it's it's kind of as if the function is uh, uh, unary, right? It's like it takes one argument. Actually, if I'm yeah, actually if I'm being more honest, it's not really like it's unary. It's like it's 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 as if the function has the same arity as the constructor in some sense, right? Because you've already loaded up the instance with some arity, let's say. You've pre it's like you've partially applied, right? I mean if you think about it, constructors are essentially partial application. Right? Like the, the like when you're constructing when you're constructing a new class, it's it's kind of like you're partially applying. It's like you're saying I have these functions that I want to have called, but I want them to be partially applied with this data that I supply in the constructor before actually calling the functions. And I think that's a pretty useful way of thinking about um, methods in object-oriented programming and classes in object-oriented programming. Aha, so this turned out to an interesting discussion, even though we're talking about divide. I hope that makes sense. A anyways, th the reason uh, I was saying that, why was I saying that? Right, like the, the, the point of reducing arity. It's like reducing arity in some sense is a good thing because you are uh, simplifying the things that you have to pass to something in order to, to get results, right? So if you can reduce arity, that's that's a good thing. I mean, if not like you shouldn't go crazy doing it, but of, but of course, if, if you can do it sensibly. So then... Uh, partially applying a function and pass, then passing around the partially applied function, assuming that the partially applied function is simpler to reason about, which in most cases it probably is because it now has fewer dependencies, uh, then that's a good thing. So, so hence, again, instead of just explicitly calling divide every time, 
then maybe it would make sense to construct this function f that you load with the with the number 100, assuming that you have something that's 100 units long, or, or like assuming uh, you have the upper like the percentage 100. And then you simply just await the second argument like that you want to uh, where you say, well, this is the number of parts that I want to divide the thing into, right? Ooh, what did I do now? I tried to pass. What? Ah, oh, sorry. Of course. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, because f I, I forgot that I had partially applied it. I thought I was calling uh, divide, but I called f, right? So I mean, we call so f is now the partially applied function. So I mean, you can apply it to 100, then you can apply it to three or whatever. I mean, and then you get like the, the parts. So I think actually, there are probably a number of scenarios where that would be uh, interesting and make sense. But of course, if you have the reverse scenario where it's like, well, I mean, you could you could construct a function half uh, that takes that takes some x. Oh, sorry, let's do it in a uh, in a in a point free manner, right? So so then you could say, well, I want I want I want to flip divide, and I want to apply that to two, right? So applying the second argument of divide to or applying divide uh, to some argument which is yet unknown, and then to two. So the first argument is unknown. So now we could say half of 100, and then we would get 50, right? Half of 20, and we would get 10, and so forth. Actually, maybe I should call this half no 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 it makes sense to say half right i'm sorry english speakers please correct me <laughs> right okay so but the, but that makes sense right like so so you could say i mean like make a third function and then maybe let's use a different syntax i mean of course we could do the same thing here we could say flip and then divide and then apply that to three and then third, oh, sorry, applying third to 30 would give us 10, right? Applying third to 300 would give us 100. But of course, you could use, let's let's construct this function in a different way. So let's say third equals r dot divide. And then we use r uh, dot underscore, underscore, uh, right, to say that the first argument is unknown, but the second one should be should be two. Okay, Oh, sorry, sorry, three, because it's third, right? So that's another way of defining third. So third is now a function, and you can apply third to 30 again, you can apply third to 300, right? Uh, okay, I have to stop the cat. Wait, wait. All right, let, let's, let's keep this going. Sorry. So okay, that's divide. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot more to it, right? And of course, then I, I think you can trivially understand what uh, uh, what multiply does, right? It's like you can say uh, multiply, and then you can multiply two numbers, right? Same thing, multiply two, five, right? pardon the interruption. Okay, so, um, and then I mean, you can do the same thing, right? Like you can partially apply uh, one of the arguments, or you can partially apply or what? Yeah, or you can partially apply the first argument, or you can partially apply the second argument. And I mean, if you look at the the examples that they have here, I mean, those make sense, right? It's like they're saying, well, you could construct a function double, which is the multiply, mul oh, whoop, mul multiply, so the multiplication of two. So if you then call double on two, you get four. If you call double on a hundred, you get two hundred, right? And uh, and of course, I mean again, like another way of thinking about the why you would want to partially apply these binary functions to turn them into unary functions is of course then that. Uh, that would allow you to put these functions into pipelines or into composes, right? So that, that would make them composable because they are now unary functions that simply can take some data as input and produce some some uh, data or some return value as output, right? Take some singular value as input and produce some singular value as, as output. And of course, I mean, maybe it's interesting to, to just note that uh, multiply is, uh, I can't remember this name. Is it like associative? That's, whew, uh, associative is that the so so like i'm trying to say that the 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 order of the arguments don't matter whereas in in uh, i mean it doesn't matter whether you do uh 10 times 20 or 20 times 10 but of course it matters if you do 100 through or 100 over 10 or 10 over 100 oops sorry 100 right those are different things right so and in mathematics the associative property is a property of some binary operations 
right right but what is it so it's like two no it's yeah maybe this is not it no i mean that's just saying that two times 20 or like 10 times 20 uh times 30 would be the same thing as doing this right it's like it has to do with where the parentheses are but maybe that's actually no i'm so I, sorry i'm in i'm in stupid territory now i shouldn't do this <laughs> what is it community commutativity yes isn't this it right in mathematics commutativity if changing the order of the operands does not change the result it is a yeah 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 if uh, changing the order of operands does not change the result right it is a fundamental property of many binary operations and many mathematical proofs depend on it so most familiar as the name of the property that says who huh? most familiar as the name of the property that says yeah whatever so 3 plus 4 E as the, is the same thing as four plus three and two times five is the same thing as five times two so so sorry the word is commutative so so multiplication is commutative but division is is not commutative so uh, if you have a uh, non-commutative function then you might want to use r dot flip or r dot underscore underscore to make sure that you are partially applying the correct argument whereas if you have something that is commutative you don't have to bother about that because it doesn't matter if you partially apply the first one or the second one or whichever or sorry actually the first one or the second one because we're now talking about a binary operation okay um uh, let's cut here before i get long-winded um thanks a ton for watching and i will see you in the next video thanks